thank you for being here and we're going to get going. Okay, thank you for hosting and uh, yeah, ready to roll here. <laughs> okay, here we go. Are you familiar with the study performed by qualified residents on the erosion and drainage issues at Holly Lake Ranch? That report was completed several boards ago and offers a great deal of information. Do you have any concerns with these issues at Holly Lake Ranch and how they may affect our properties and even the lake? Those are very complicated issues. How would we manage initiating a solution to cover these issues? First off, I've read the whole report and even watched videos of that flood. And this is a huge issue for High Lake Ranch today, tomorrow, and into the next generations. The reason is rainfall hits the ground. It either goes in the ground or it runs off into the lakes and streams. When it runs off, it also makes drainages deeper and also makes erosion worse. Uh, the group that did a fantastic job on that uh, program and going back through that with the board would be a great place to start. I would ask that group to come up with the priorities um, that they would address first and start working with that long term. Uh, we need to understand watershed management and that goes for all yards, fertilizers, septic tanks. Everything that runs into our lakes ends up in our lakes. So yes, uh, that's a huge deal, educational deal, but it's going to require some uh, commitment and time for everybody. Thank you. In regard to the tennis courts, pickleball courts, gym, pools, etc., okay. would you be willing to listen to frequent users of these areas in regards to the needs of the facilities, i.e., what improvements might enhance the facilities, additional equipment that the residents might find beneficial, etc.? Well, I think absolutely. I would think the tennis courts, and I'm no tennis expert, uh, has a association that has guidelines for. Uh, colors, striping, distance, things like that, net strength. Uh, pick a ball, I'm sure, has all the same things. Uh, so anytime we do anything like that, I and mean, if we had tournaments, we'd want to be in compliance with the rules. Same thing goes for the golf course, the USGA and, and the Men's Golf Association. There's some guidelines there on how you keep courses, how you mow the greens. And so those are all really, really good things to keep our uh, amenities in compliance uh, with uh, current safety for sure and current rules and regulations if we hold tournaments. Mm -hmm. Holly Lake Ranch allowed the buildings to fall into disrepair for many years, unfortunately. What method of approach would you use to maintain our buildings and facilities so this never happens again? And what are your thoughts on repairs and maintenance? Well, the first thing I would do is ask the current board or the new board, it'll take place in October, for all of us to load up in a car or a bus or whatever and go physically to each one of these amenities, walk around them, let's take some notes. We can have a pre um, form, pre, pre ready for some check offs. For example, how's the roof? How's the rafters? Any, any electrical wires showing? How's the floors? Any slip and falls? Any danger to the steps? These are all things that are commonly inspected by insurance inspectors, by new home buyers and take these through the process, but do it as a team. Once we got that information, then we could better prioritize which ones we need to, to work on first, and we could also get with some experts on the ranch on what might be some other ways to address that. Mm -hmm. Holly Lake Ranch celebrated 50 years last year, and it is our understanding the original dues were approximately $10 per month. Our current dues are one fifty seven seventy six per month. Have we kept up with the cost of inflation over the years and the cost of doing business? What are your thoughts on this? Well, I haven't tracked the inflation over the years. I think our dues for uh, what I would call a ranch type HOA are very reasonable. I don't think they're too high nor too low. I think they're fixed about where they need to be. Uh, we certainly need to always, when you think of dues, make sure we're not going up on dues until we've looked at every single expense, every single department to make sure that they're being run the best they are, to make sure the best people are in the best jobs. Along that same line, I want to retain and re recruit the best people and uh, let them do their job so we can have uh, more fun and less uh, issues at Holly Lake Ranch. Mm -hmm. Okay, this question was just for you. Great. You have definitely proven your dedication and knowledge 
in regard to Lake Greenbrier mm -hmm. and the issues we have experienced. Do you feel we are now headed in the right direction to avoid further issues? Your thoughts on the matter? I don't think we're headed in the right direction, Lori, until we get some more education to landowners and some simple things like don't mow your yard all the way to the lakefront. We need to leave what they call a buffer, it would be like 10 yards of Bermuda grass or St. Augustine or weeds, whatever you want. When you leave that buffer, it acts as a straw, so when the water comes down the hill, a lot of that nitrogen and phosphorus, which is what makes the green algae grow, is stopped and trapped by that. So that is one thing to do that. Uh, as a result of more people, uh, more dogs, more animals, more all that, you know, this is a watershed issue. It's gonna take training. It's gonna take cooperation from the residents and some assistance from the association. They have land too that joins it. Uh, golf course land, common area, all that. And so we're all gonna have to do our part to protect the watershed. <laughs> The maintenance department leadership is one of the most important positions on the ranch. What qualifications do you feel this position should require, and how would you go about hiring a replacement? I would look for a person that may be, uh, maybe semi-retired at the point, but had general contracting experience and knows all trades, electrical, plumbing, roofing, framing, that could offer that guidance. A person might not even need to work full time to be able to do that and keep up with projects. Uh, you, we could also look to uh, outsourcing that position in its entirety and having somebody that's uh, super skilled do that and uh, lead us into uh, make sure we're doing a good job. We're not under any code out here, uh, such as the building code in many other equipment or any other city, and so I think it's really, really important that we uh, build and repair things as good as they would require them in any city in Texas. Mm -hmm. Bull, our dam, is, our dam is a major concern for all of Holly Lake Ranch and has been for quite some time. At this point, we do not know what should or would be required to make necessary repairs. It was recently stated TCEQ would not be here, but the engineers hired by Holly Lake Ranch will be here in October. Do you feel under these circumstances, it would be in Holly Lake's best interest to get a second opinion upon receiving their recommendation? I, I don't know which firm they've used, Laurie. Um, that, that's a tough question. Um, they're engineered, they're sign off. I'd like to see their recommendation first. I think there's a couple alternatives to the dam from what I understand. One of them is do we work on the spillway and make it more effective or do we actually try to chase this leak down? I'd wait till we see the first complete report and see what their solution is. This thing is, has been engineered several times over the last 15 years. So we should have a pretty good consensus of what's going on. We may need a more innovative way to fix it, um, but it's gonna go slow because TCEQ is taking it slow. Mm -hmm. Would you be in favor of hiring a contract employee to search for local, state, and federal grants that might benefit Hallett Lake Ranch? An example, our private airport is used for care flight and emergency use. Are there available funds to help with our lake issue? Well, I applied with the Sabine River Authority last week, a grant for the blue-green algae expense at Lake Greenbrier. It's called a community grant. It's on their website. It'll pay up to $20,000, depending on how they interpret our expense. We showed 31,000 expense plus in-kind labor by boaters. Uh, that comes up for a vote in October, December, and March. You get three to four chances to get your grant money approved. I think there's commission grant writers out there for all sorts of things. I don't think you need to pay them. Most of them work on a commission. If they're on a commission, they're gonna be very inclined to find grants. I also looked into revitalization grants for section three. They're all over the place, but you need somebody that really knows how to write a grant and take a commission's fine and help us find some free money. There's lots of money out there uh, for lakes, stewardship, conservation, and even section three if we look hard enough. Awesome. Lack of transparency is one of the biggest complaints residents express. How can the board of directors create a friendlier and more trusting environment among the residents? Are you willing to work to create a more open line of communication? Please explain how you would go about opening those lines of communication. 
Well, as I've said this before, I think before a meeting, we should have a meet and greet. Hey, if we want to get some cookies and water and I'll talk for 30 minutes, that will get the stage started. Uh, just like we do at church, we have coffee and we visit, and that's some of the best times we have before the service starts. And then the board meeting can start. But during that time of meet and greet, you may have a question for Jerry in security or a question from Adam, the GM, that he can answer. Save some time during the meeting, and there are things he can, uh, we can get them off the list right away. So I would like to do that. The second thing I'd like to do is, is I'd like to appoint an ambassador for each section. Now these would be the most, um, we call them one of the highest respected people in each section. I'd want to bring them in three times a year to corporate headquarters and educate them. We talk to them about lakes, we talk to them about golf course, we can talk to them about erosion. One topic at a time feed them lunch, send them back to their section with a good feeling where they have knowledge of what's going on. This way it's not coming through the coffee shop, uh, a text, an email, uh, uh, social media, but we're, we're, we're telling them firsthand they can carry the message out there second, firsthand. Uh, next, I would uh, for sure have a weekly video uh, put out by Adam each week on some short subjects that are about two to three minutes. He could do one with security, one with maintenance. Uh, one at the pickleball courts on uh, resurfacing, one at the lakes when they come in October, but we could keep people informed. Lack of transparency is one of the biggest complaints residents express. How can the board of directors create a friendlier and more trusting environment among the residents? Are you willing to work to create a more open line of communication? Please explain how you would go about opening those lines of communication. Yeah, let me start by saying, Everybody that's a property owner is a member, and every board member and every person on staff, we work for our members, and therefore I believe we owe you a duty of a care of service, uh, just like at a restaurant. Uh, you need some more tea, we should get it. We should have a good attitude about all this. I'd like to open the board meetings with 30 minutes of meet and greet with the board. If you have a question for Adam or security or accounting before the meeting, get some of your questions out of the way. That would be very, very helpful. It would start the meeting in a very, very joyful mood, and then we could go into the business section. Secondly, I, or thirdly, I would like to have an ambassador for each section. These people would be uh, the cream of the crop in their section. We would invite them in three times a year. We would educate them on different topics like the watershed, like golf course, like maintenance, and send them back in their communities with firsthand knowledge so they could uh, carry out the message that they've learned from us. Over time, this really worked. It worked well at Lower Colorado River Authority. It worked really well at Parks and Wildlife on a committee I was on. And when you go back in the community, you'd be surprised the topic comes up and you go, oh, we just talked about that. Let me tell you how it works. So that's, that's what I would do there. I'd also use um, uh, Survey Monkey. And let's take some polls of people. What do y'all think about this? Agree, disagree, neutral. We don't need five pages of feedback. Just what's your gut feeling on it? And we could do some things like that very quick to test the waters on new ideas. Mm -hmm. Do you think Holly Lake Grant should implement campaign rules in order to promote fairness and transparency? Will you share your thoughts about your campaign experience? My campaign experience has been, uh, it's more expensive than I thought it was gonna, gonna be. But I do believe if, if you run a campaign in uh, any other municipality, you'll have a campaign treasurer and they will take care of all your funds and those will be available to the public. And so from that standpoint, I think that we should have some guidelines on uh, disclosing your money, your spending, or who it gave, came from, and um, any sorts of in-kind donations. Taking a look at the short-term rental fees. Mm -hmm. If you own a home and the STR is your second home, you're only paying half dues. And in some cases, the STR fees and the HLR dues paid do not even cover standard home dues. Are you willing to review this policy and possibly reevaluate the fee structure? Right, if you have a home, I believe it's up to six people. You're about $20 a month short from what I pay as my regular dues of 150 plus dollars. If you're in that next bracket, you're still $2 a month short from what we pay as a regular homeowner. So this needs to be revisited where the uh, playing field is level uh, for STRs. Mm -hmm. Do you feel there is a need to have all STRs provide septic system evaluations 
showing they can accommodate the number of occupancies allowed? Do you consider this more important on lake properties? And should STR owners be required to have the septic systems checked annually? I believe we definitely should have all septic systems that SDRs have on lakefront property inspected at least annually. And right size for the home and the occupancy that they're advertising on the internet. So if they are advertising for eight people, then their septic system needs to be uh, right size for at least that. Plus you gotta contemplate a party of maybe eight or 10, so that's 16 people. That's how septic works and septic sizing. Uh, what we have going on at the lakes is called non-point source pollution, which means we don't know where it's coming from, but any one of these septics could be a contributing factor along with decaying leaves and lots of other things. Mm -hmm. Do you support increasing the number of STRs that are currently allowed? Not at this time, because if you want to bring guests in, you can put them over to Holiday Inn in a nice cabin for $135 a night. So the excuse that we don't have places for people to stay is, is uh, doesn't is, is not real. We have holiday and I've never had a problem putting people in there. Do you support holding violators accountable for breaking STR rules and how would you recommend following through with this process? Well the rules say that the uh, the board should be enforcing those and I would think the help from security and those would be you know, the way of fines and levies just like everything else. I don't know any different but I've not directly dealt with that. Mm -hmm. Do you feel a Holly Lake Ranch board member that owns an STR should recuse himself from voting on any and all policy in regard to STRs? Yes, I think that's a code of ethics that we don't have. And I think every board that I am on has a code of ethics. And in those code of ethics, it would have a conflict of interest clause and also a clause on how much you can accept as a gift. Usually it's 25 or $50. And so all board members and all key staff should have a code of ethics and that would prohibit that vote from taking place. Mm -hmm. Bull, what are your top priorities for Holly Lake Ranch? First off, I mean, I'd like to start October, I'm calling that 2023, as a new beginning of uh, more peace and harmony, more people working together. Uh, this communication, I'd like to see that I've brought up some of these things be implemented right away. So when you walk in, you feel like something happened. Okay, I don't want you to walk in October 1st or whenever that date is and see more of the same. So that, that would be my first goal. Second goal would be to make sure we have the right people in the right seat on the bus. That's a long-term expression for, you know, if, if, uh, if Betty's better at uh, greeting people instead of counting money, we'll, we'll move Betty to greet people. But let's get people with their personalities and their job skills in the right position if we don't already have done that. That requires just going through everybody in one time uh, and checking to see that you're getting the best out of that person and using their skills best. You know, we all go get a physical every year uh, to make sure we're doing okay. There's no reason why Holly Lake Ranch new board should not get a physical uh, starting day one and go through everything, check our blood work, check our blood pressure, check our communication, check all this stuff up and then come out with our plan for next year. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of confusion about security versus Wood County Sheriff's Department and who to call and when. How can this be clarified to the residents? How can we make sure residents know what the du duties of our security office are? Well, if it's a criminal act, you call uh, Wood County, but I think you can always call our people and they can route you right away. You know, the other thing is, you know, we've talked about it, is it's a very good town hall. There's lots of things we can do sessions on, but we could have Jerry and the Wood County Sheriff have a 30 minute or one hour town hall and educate residents. I think it'd be of great interest and security is the number one interest in the ranch when they did the survey about a year and a half ago. So I think that's one of the best ways to clear up some of the things. Bull, thank you again. Excellent job. We just appreciate your willingness to go through the questions again and again. All three of our candidates have worked hard, and I know y'all are tired. Best of luck to all of you. Okay, just encourage you to read the uh, resumes and pick the resumes you think feel best. You are hiring two people to work for you. Thank you. Thanks, Bull.